Well, hello and welcome once again to a new beginning in Christ Gospel. We're glad you tuned in today. Once again, I think we've got a good program. <laughs> I do like our show. <laughs> you know, and historically, we're going to be studying uh, very soon about the apostasy, the falling away uh, that the Bible talks about in the last days. And I think we're getting close to the last days, so we're going to introduce that by going through Matthew 24. And so if you have your Bibles today, if you can turn over there, and we'll be there in a few minutes. But if not, we go run and get them. We're going <laughs> to put some music on. Yeah, get your pencil and paper while you're Amen. at it. Call a friend and tell them we're on again. Amen. So, and, and recently, and the reason we're going into this is to talk about it because uh, some things that have taken place uh, recently uh, in our world, in our nation, uh, are following just exactly right down what Jesus said would take place. And so uh, beheadings that are taking place, the Bible talks about it. Uh, during the uh, tribulation time, there'll be people who have to have their heads cut off. And some people say, well, are we in that period right now? And I said, no, because we're not in tribulation yet, because the rapture has not it's taken not. place. Or if it did, everybody that's listening to this broadcast right now missed left. it. Yeah, <laughs> left behind. Oh, that don't sound good. You know what, though, uh, <coughs> James? It is going to happen. It is going to take place. We need to talk about these things. They're not the favorite <clears throat> things for most people, especially ministers or pastors, to talk about. But, yeah, I, can I tell you what I told you about me sure. and my friend? I was talking to one of my friends this morning on the phone. And she said, you know, my son told me, and he's about... 40-something years old or 50, but she said, uh, my son told me, you know, when I was in school, we would hear this talk about taking the mark, and if you didn't take the mark, it's going to chop your head off, and he said, you know, when I was growing up, I just really couldn't see how that was possible, how that could possibly take place. He said, but now, seeing what's going on in the world nowadays, yes, I can see, absolutely see how that can happen. You know, the wonderful thing about that <coughs> is good to see that people are beginning to see oh, yeah. that the Bible is real. Oh, yeah. And uh, we're going to look at that. But here recently, if you've been watching the news, you know that uh, the Prime Minister of uh, Israel, you know. Netanyahu, uh, has come to the United States and made an address to Congress. And I believe that the nation of Israel... Uh, is basically alone in the world right now since the United States basically has turned its back on Israel. Yeah, you know, people don't want to hear you <coughs> say that, that America has already uh, turned their back on Israel. Mm -hmm. Yes, the United States has literally turned them down. And it's, you know, it's, it's a whole. Now, me and James, other true Christians, will always stand for and with Israel. Absolutely. Always, always. But the country as a whole, the United States, I am all. Well, I believe that the majority of the people in the United States are pro-Israel. The problem is that they're uneducated, don't listen to the right news, and uh, are not aware of what's going on in the world. But let me just update that, because it goes along with what we're talking about okay. today or what we will be talking about. The nation of Iran is building a nuclear arsenal. They say it's for people, peaceful purposes. That's probably one of the biggest lies that's ever been told. Secret uh, meetings have been taking place between Iran and the United States. That is, the President of the United States. And in those secret meetings, they have agreed that if Israel launches an attack against Iran to knock out their nuclear capabilities, the United States, the president, has ordered that our aircraft and anti whatever it takes to, to that detection system will shoot down Israeli jets on their way to bomb Iran. Can you so, believe 
Oh, I'm getting mad. Uh, well, yeah, we need to stop. And we'll keep talking, but here's what I'm saying. Turn off some of the stuff you're watching on television yeah. and go in and, and go to the news and see what's really happening. Go to the educational channels, AETN and those, uh, and see the news and see what's actually taking place. In their place on the internet, you go and watch Israel to read about the news on Well, Israel. we do. What's we happening? go to all kinds of news. We even How do you find it? It's sad to say, we even watch the congressional meetings now because we want to see what's going on. That's bad. Yeah, and it's sad. Well, I mean, at, it's any, sad. at any rate, not being critical, praise no. God, because I know God's still in charge and we can live in peace in all this. However, people who are uninformed uh, of what politics that are taking place in this country need to get uh, a, awake. And, and that's see what we what's try going to do. on. And we that's try what to shake them. So, and I'm going to stop right okay. there until we get into our program that's because right. we got we had a request, and uh, we mm -hmm. want to. Uh, was that uh, harvest? It was harvest. Uh, harvest laborers. Laborers, yeah. Laborers, yeah. Uh, it used to be out on Highway Five, out of Mountain Home. Yeah. Now we just enjoyed those people so much that we've had a request that did we have anything on harvest laborers? And uh, and we ha did. We, we do. Well, praise the Lord. And uh, so we're going to be playing that today. I it's about 24 minutes, an hour plus, but we're going to just run 24 minutes of it today. And I think you'll really enjoy it because when we go over there, it's not the gracious, how great this music is and all that stuff. It's where's your heart. That's right. Praise God. And people just, well, you'll enjoy this so much. Praise the Lord. So we're going to go over right now. And listen to this, and you're going to see uh, James and Betty and Jesse and Mary. and Mary. And if you look right down in the right hand, left, yeah, left, left hand, hand corner, hand corner we're going to see somebody that we go to church with. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> so, it's a girl, I'll tell you that. Yeah. All right. And we'll be right back. <laughs>
glad to have my brother and his wife with us tonight. Uh, she sent me a text and sorry they wouldn't be here, but they sneaked up on us. So I'm glad they did. Herbie's
Bless my heart and touch my soul And the bridges that behind me Lord, I burn them to the ground I'm still holding on You're the best thing I ever found Only likely not to prosper Left hanging over my head I said I'd never amount to nothing That's what most people say I've been known to be unsettled Never stayed around too long You're the treasure I was searching for Lord, I'm still holding on I'm still holding on Lord, I'm You gave me a smile Touch my heart and touch my soul And the bridges that behind me Lord, I burn them to the ground I'm still holding You're the best thing I ever found I'm still holding on You're the best thing I ever found I hope you enjoyed that so much. We just love those folks and uh, Wow. And I just want to say, Betty's brother, Wilbur, is one playing a mandolin, and he's over in Flippin'. Is he's over, yeah, over in Flippin', praise and God. He's keeping you close. And uh, James is in a retirement center over at Gasville. Miss Betty's God. passed away. Yeah, Miss Betty's passed away. And uh, I don't see him every once in a while, praise the Lord. And that was Anna Faye. In the Anna corner. Faye was down there in that left-hand I corner, praise her. God. Amen. <laughs> well, you've got a reading for us I do, today. I do, I do. Um... It's a, it's a true story. See, these are the ones I like the best. Mm -hmm. I like the true stories. At the prodding of my friends, I'm writing this story. My name is Mildred Honor, and I'm a former elementary school music teacher from Des Moines, Iowa. I've always supplemented my income by teaching piano lessons. Sometimes I have done, it's something that I've done a, a, for over 30 years. During those years, I've found that children have many levels of music ability, and even though I have never had the pleasure of having a protege, I have taught some very talented students. However, I have also had my share of what I call musically challenged pupils, one such pupil being Robbie. Robbie was 11 years old when his mother, a single mother, dropped him off for his first piano lesson. I prefer that the students, especially boys, begin at an earlier age, which I explained to Robbie. But Robbie said that it had always been his mother's dream to hear him play the piano. So I took him as a student. At the end of each weekly lesson, he would always say, my mom's going to hear me play someday. But to me, it seemed hopeless. He just did not have any inborn ability. I only knew his mother from a distance as she dropped Robbie off or waited in her aged car to pick him up. She always waved and smiled but never dropped in. Then one day Robbie stopped coming for his lessons. I thought about calling him but assumed that because of his lack of ability 
he had decided to pursue something else. I was also glad that he had stopped coming. He was a bad advertisement for my teaching. Several weeks later, I mailed a flyer recital to the students' homes. To my surprise, Robbie, who had received a flyer, asked me if he could be in the recital. I told him that the recital was for current pupils and that because he had dropped out, he really did not qualify. He told me that his mother had been sick and unable to take him to his piano lessons, but that he had been practicing. Please, Miss Honor, I've just got to play, he insisted. Well, I don't know what led me to allow him to play in the recital. Perhaps it was his insistence or maybe something inside of me saying that it would be all right. <clears throat> the night of the recital came and the high school gymnasium was just packed with parents, relatives, and friends. I put Robbie last in the program just before I was to come up and thank all the students and play a finishing piece. I thought that any damage he might do would come at the end of the program and I could always salvage his poor performance through my curtain closer. Well, the recital went off without a hitch. The students had been practicing and it showed. Then Robbie came up to the stage. His cl clothes were wrinkled and his, his hair looked as though he had run an egg beater through it. Why wasn't he dressed up like the other students, I thought, and why didn't his mother at least make him comb his hair for the special night? Robbie pulled out the piano bench, and I was surprised when he announced that he had chosen to play Mozart's Concerto No. 21 in C major. I was not prepared for what I heard next. His fingers were light on the keys. They even danced nimbly on the ivories. He went from Pisamio to Fortissimo, from Allegro to Virtuoso. His suspended chords that Mozart demanded were magnificent. Never had I heard Mozart played so well by anyone his age. After six and a half minutes, he, he ended in a grand crescendo, and everyone was on their feet in a wild applause. Overcoming tears, I ran up to the stage and put my arms around Robbie. Enjoy. I have never heard you play like that, Robbie. How did you do it? Through the microphone, Robbie explained. Well, Miss Honor, remember I told you that my mom was sick. Well, she actually had cancer and passed away this morning. And well, she was born deaf. So tonight was the first time she had ever heard me play. And I, and I wanted to make it special. There wasn't a dry eye in the house that evening as the people from social services led Robbie from the stage to the foster care. I noticed that even, in their, eye, even that their eyes were red and puffy. I thought to myself then how much richer my life had been for taking Robbie as my pupil. No, I have never had a protege, but that night I became a protege of Robbie. He was the teacher and I was the pupil, for he had taught me the meaning of perseverance and love and believing in yourself and it may even be even taking a chance on someone and you don't know why. Robbie was killed years, years later in the senseless bombing of the Alfred Free Murray Federal Building in Oklahoma City in April in 1995. You know, that's a beautiful story and just more reason why Christians, we should never turn our back on anybody. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the love of Jesus is what drives us on. That's what allows us to endure. That's what allows us to put up with things because we know who Jesus is and we know what's going to take place in our eternity. And so here's the little guys like Robbie who oftentimes get overlooked and pushed aside. And many of you out there today have experienced that very same thing. And to you, I have to say, don't give up. Just keep going. I mean, even though Robbie was having difficulty playing exactly like he should, he, he mm -hmm. stayed in. I don't know the time period that elapsed between the time that he stopped taking lessons and the performance. Mm -mm. But the point is that he didn't quit. Yeah. 
he just kept going and he kept going. And I can't read that story. I'm surprised Carolyn can because I get all teary-eyed because I, I think of, wow, what a, what a wonderful thing this young man was. And, and then, too, what a terrible waste of his life. And, and there's so many lives that are wasting today. And I want you to, this week, if you will, praise God, I want you to join with us daily, every day, 8 o'clock every morning, please, and let's pray for our president and for our government that they might come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior because that's the only salvation for the world. Praise God. Uh, this thing which is going on with terrorists and refusal to call uh, anybody who, uh, whose religion is based in the Koran uh, an enemy, folks, they are, people who believe in the Koran have to believe that they have to kill off everybody who is not a, a Muslim. Muslim. That's the religion. And that's I what it is. I don't know how much so, we can make it. That's yeah. what is in there. And now that, but it's also biblical. So turn with us right now to the 24th chapter of Matthew. Mm -hmm. Praise God. And I'm going to let Carolyn begin to read. Uh, on verse 3. Praise the Lord. Carolyn. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him <coughs> privily, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? See, here's three questions that are being asked right of Jesus. Praise the Lord. First, uh, when shall these things be? What shall the sign of thy coming and what is the end hmm. of the the world. Now, verse 4, Sister and Karen. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and shall deceive many. And see, once again, here, we're seeing this exactly. They're, they're saying, we have so many false prophets, so many uh, Muhammad, for instance, was an absolute false prophet. Uh, if you check his history uh, and find out that uh, his bride, he took her at nine, and, and we can go into all the rape and things that took place, all of the killings and everything. And here's a man whose entire life is based on evil. Mm -hmm. And yet, all the Muslims in the world are following that. Hmm. Well, how does that go along with what we're talking about, Brother James? Well, let's just see what it says about uh, this time. Verse 6, Sister Carolyn. And ye, sh and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. See, the end is not yet. Mm -hmm. Now, I like that because... We're, we're going to see a lot of trouble, folks, before we're taken out. We're going to see a lot of I see of it now. We're seeing it. We're seeing the beginning, beginning of sorrows, praise God. Now, listen to what it says in verse 7. Praise the Lord. Sister Carolyn. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in divers places. All right, praise God. Here again, listen to what it says. For nation shall rise against nation. And if you go to Strong's Concordance, you'll find that the word nation can also be translated as religion. Whoa, now you're hitting close so to home. Nations are based on religion. religion. The United States is a Christian nation. The Middle East is basically a Muslim, Muslim nation. So what we're seeing right now is nation against nation, mm -hmm. religion uh, against religion. And what's happening with the Muslims right now is that they are professing to be one thing, but their religion requires them to kill and to behead and to anybody who is not a Muslim. That's and so we're seeing this taking place right now. If people say, well, what's the difference in your religion and their religion? We don't kill people. Well, that's, our religion is based on love. The 
Christianity says thou shalt not kill. Their religion says you have to. Thou shalt kill. And I'm not preaching against Muslims right now. We're talking about end times and how the Bible is being fulfilled here. Listen to what it also says. And kingdom against kingdom. Once again, when you go and you check the translation, the word kingdom can be translated governments. Hmm. And so that's exactly what we're seeing. We're seeing government against government. We're seeing the Russian Let's government against American government, against the Middle East government, against the South American, whatever, whatever it is. Praise God. But what we're trying to say is we are living in troubled times. And, but listen to what he says once again because it's so important. See that ye be not troubled. That's what I have to fight against because I get so upset when I see these things. We, we have to stop and realize, don't let fear take over, don't let these things take over. Why? Because we serve a God of promise. We serve a God who says these things are going to happen and there's not one single thing you can do about it. You can't stop it either. That's right. When God's will is working, you just well say, hey... I'm not even going to try to stop it. I'm just going to say, okay, God, if that's your, according to your will, let it be so. And, mm. and stop worrying about what's going on in the news. Stop worrying about what this government's doing, what that government is doing. All I have to do is stop and just say, thank you, Lord. Praise God that you're a God that loves, a God of peace, a God who uh, is a God of prosperity, a God who is a God of healing a God who takes care of every need that we have. But here's what happens if when we stop and begin to linger on what's happening in the world, we get our eye on the world and off of God. Well, yeah, um, I, I know that I'm, I've got to not let what things trouble me. Yes, they bother me, but I can't say, well, I've got to do something about it. All I can do is pray and trust God. Well, That's I'm, where my peace <laughs> comes. I say, God, you are all power. And I know you know what's going on. You're not surprised about that. Yeah, we're to be aware of what's going on, but put it in God's hands. I don't like what's going on some of the stuff. And, and if I had my way, there'd be crispy critters everywhere. But I don't. <laughs> so I have to trust the Lord. Well, and what you're talking about is the way man and the way we've been wants to do We want to react with violence, mm. you know. Uh, I mean, God said, hey, I'm in charge. Yes. No matter how bad it gets, I am still in charge. And oh. if you're my son, if you're my daughter, if you're a Christian, if you love Jesus, trust him. don't worry about it. Just trust me. Bad? Have you uh, seen how bad yeah. it's going to get? <laughs> oh, this it, ain't it, even it, the tip yeah. of the iceberg, Come on. folks. Praise God. Let's go on. Uh, Nine. Let's continue with seven. I'm, seven. Uh, yes. Read that again. Okay. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences, and earthquake in divers places. And read eight. And all these are the beginning of sorrows. <laughs> now listen to what it says Whew. once again. And there shall, uh, there's yep. that word shall, mm -hmm. and there shall be famines, and pestilence, and earthquakes in divers are mm. many places. And we're seeing these things all over the earth right now. We're seeing starving children. We're seeing uh, just everything in devastation. It's just a sign of things to come. Now, I'm telling you right now, what I see on Facebook, all these beheadings and all this, I'm telling you what, and all these disasters, it is close. It is close. It's and close. that's the point we're trying to make today. Too close. It's getting closer every day. This is all coming Yes. Uh, to fulfillment, praise the Lord. What does it mean? It means that the time of the end is getting near. Yes, well, sir. what time of the end of what? The time of the end of the time of the Gentiles. Are you hearing? Mm -hmm. Since the nation of Israel did away with Christ, the time now comes over to Gentile control of the world. And in this time which we're living in now, praise God, all this stuff is coming, but there's coming a day when God's going to say, 
That's it. The time of unbelievers. Gentile means unbelievers. It doesn't mean Americans, whatever. It means unbelievers. And believers in who? In God, in Jesus Christ. Not the God of Allah. Uh -uh. uh, Not the God of Mohammed. Uh, It is the God of Abraham, Isaac, And and Jacob, who is the true father, descending down to Jesus Christ, who is the only way of salvation. Amen. And God has put up with a lot of stuff in the last 2,000 years, but I'm here to tell you that it's just about over. That's what we're reading, praise the Lord, right now. Mm. Right. Let's go down here because I want everybody to see that all these are the beginning of sorrows. Wow, that's pretty rough as it is. <laughs> yeah, read nine, uh, Sister Carolyn. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations, again, religions, for my name's sake. So listen to what they're saying. Go ahead and read 10. Okay. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. See what it's saying. Listen to what it's saying, folks. Then, what? Mm. Then, this time that we're in right now, praise God, yeah. shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. Who? You. Christians, Christians. People who believe in Jesus Christ. He's talking to his disciples here. He's not talking to the world. He's talking about those who believed and stood with him. Then shall you uh, be delivered up to be afflicted. And what does affliction mean? Hardship. Mm-hmm. We have, to, we have to separate hardship and disease, praise God. Okay. And shall kill you. That's strong. And you shall be hated of all nations or religions for my name's sake. Listen, they were hated all the time of Christ. They were hated all by the Roman Empire. They were hated throughout history. All Christians have always been hated. You know, because you're a Christian, you, you're going to, a lot of Christians are going to go through this. That's right. I'm telling you, it's close. Well, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord shall deliver them out of them all. Praise God. Mm. So we have to stand by all nations, our religions. Christianity today is under attack from every every force, everywhere around. Uh, We're under attack. Attack. More Praise and God. more aggressive, I might say. Amen. I mean, let's, okay, I can't get into that. Let's go on. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets, the, the Muhammad, Allah, Pope. Uh, the Pope, shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Mm. Who's he talking to? He's talking about the world and to the prophets. Mm -hmm. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Brother James, this is is hard. This is tough. This is scary. Even without Jesus in my life, you know, and I know there's going to come time, so family's going to be against family. Son against father. Father gets son. Daughter gets mother. Mother gets daughter. Families. This is going to tear them apart, and they're going to put them against it. Christian against Christian. It's already torn many families apart because many families, part of them are Christian, part of them are not. And in these days now, the young people tend to, they want to laugh at you because you're a Christian. They want to laugh at you because you have conservative values. They want to laugh at you because you believe in the Bible. They want to laugh at you because you believe in Jesus Christ and the sacrifice that he made. The Bible just ain't real to people, to the, this generation that's now come, I mean, especially the one after, whew, say Our two, three generations from now. Our schools today wow. preach against Christ. You can go into a school, any library, and you are not going to find God's holy Bible there. But, but you will find the Koran. Or you, uh, homosexual Bibles, lifestyles. All, you, everything that is against God is in our schools today. Mm-hmm. Anything that is for God has been pushed aside. Yes. So, yes, we're living in this time. Why? Because people are ignorant of God's will. They have no knowledge. They, have, they lack understanding. And we're going to talk about that because 
uh, next week as we start, we're going to get into the apostasy and start telling what happens. There's people who, well, for, it, for in 2 Timothy, it talks about they'll reach out with itching ears. Mm -hmm. Itching ears means they want somebody to preach to them what they like. Tickling. When you preach the truth of the gospel, people ain't going to like you. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Let me, <laughs> mm -mm. Preacher, let me tell you that right now. You may have a big congregation, but they may not like you. They just go because it's a socially accepted thing. Now, when I see uh, places where 10,000 teenagers, youth come together and they dance and scream and holler and do all this and everything and then turn right back around and, and get out the next day. Did they send a message out? Did they go out? Yes, some of them did. But the vast majority of them just went on their way the next day. It was just another form of entertainment for them. How do I know that? Because the Bible tells us that many are going to fall away in those last days. Many are going to go by the wayside. Many are going to turn their back on Christianity because it says right mm -hmm. here, praise the Lord, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And you know, Brother James, it breaks my heart to know that the Bible's talking there's going to be so many, so many that won't endure to the end. That's right. They're going to fall away, and that's exactly what the Bible says. And I'm not knocking religion. Well, I'm false not. False religion. We false are religion. Knocking. Yes. The only true religion is Jesus Christ. And I hear people say, well, how do you know that? How do you know the Bible? Because the Bible has been proven over and over and over and over again. Yes. It's been proved every way that you can. Scientifically, it has been proven. Uh Historically, it, Historically has it has been proven. All the, all the other books, and if you go down to some place and buy books about this Bible, and you just well to throw them away. Praise God. You need this, this word. You need the Holy Spirit teaching you. Uh, and if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you need to get saved. Before it's too late. Before it's too late. Uh, because you can't just go along and say, oh, everything's going to get better. Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't. It says all the evil will wax worse and worse. To, there will never be another day in, in the future that's as good as today. Every day is going to get worse and well, worse. That's biblical. I hear a lot of people saying, well, there's going to be a great revival. Uh, well, I hope so, but I, don't, I can't find where that is written in the Bible. Mm -mm. I hear a lot of people preaching hope. My hope is in, Jesus. in what Jesus Christ has already done. And yours should be too. And let me just say this. I don't care who you are or what you've done in this life. And I'm talking to some people out there right now that you think, well, I, I've, just, I've, I've just been so bad I can't be saved. Uh, Jesus died for you. Jesus died for you. And right now, you need, if you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you need to get down on your knees right and ask now. Jesus right now just come into your heart. Can we praise pray God. Prayer that and, you, and, and endure with him. Yes, praise God. Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, hear these voices that are coming forth, Lord. Hear these voices that are crying out to you right now, Lord, to come and know you as a personal Savior. Lord, hear them and receive them into the kingdom of God. And you that are praying right now, just, just pray, Lord, come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. I denounce Satan. I denounce the world. And I receive Jesus Christ right now as Lord and Savior. Lord, I know you know all about me. And right now, Lord, I know that everything that I have done, everything that I have confessed is being cast away never to be brought up again unless the devil brings it up, but I'm going to push We're not that away. Listen to him. And cover me right now with your blood, that blood of protection. Praise the Lord. Now let me just say, if you prayed that prayer, praise God, you're into it. You're starting. Praise God. Don't give up. Don't give Endure up. Endure to the end. And people, pray for your family because when you're gone, when you're taken out, who's going to pray for them? 
That's right. They need to get saved now before it's too late. Find a good church that preaches the truth go. of the gospel of Jesus Christ and go and be a servant there and grow in the Lord. Amen. And remember, you, you shall know, know the, the truth, truth and, and the, the truth, truth will make, make you free. free. We'll see you next week. Praise the Lord. God bless.